All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming back in here, finishing off the demo. Um, this is going to be a, I had to. This is going to be a little bit different. If you were in class on uh, Wednesday, and we did the first half of the demo, um, we had uh, a couple of um, Wi-Fi networks set up. One on two point four and one on five. Um, but I had to do some things a little bit differently to record this at home. Um, for that setup and I have to do a voiceover because I uh, just recording simultaneously screen capturing and audio is something of a challenge with the equipment that I had so I had to do the screen cap and then come back here to do the voiceover so I'm gonna let you know what I'm doing as I did it in the past instead of doing it live which you know I don't know might be better um, so this will take you, I think, all the way up through uh, cracking that Wi-Fi signal and, I don't know, maybe having a video along with the instructions might be helpful as far as, you know, if you want to try it at home, something like that. Um, so all, all you see here me doing right now, this is just the just me starting the screen grab process. Opening up a new terminal session here. Oh. Okay. All right. So uh, all I've just done is w, uh, IW config here just to show you um, that I'm not connected to any other networks currently. This is just to show you that I don't I don't have the, any current existing connections here that might cause any problems or lead to any false positives. Um, it's not really like a nothing up my sleeves kind of a thing. It's more like I'm just showing you what the interfaces look like now because in a moment uh, these names will change. And, well, you'll see. All right. So I'm um, highlighting these because it's currently in managed mode. What we want to do is we want to flip this over to monitoring. We basically want, but in order to do this, we need to have a wireless card that is capable of, of doing monitoring, which most of them will be able to. Now you can see the mode has changed from managed to monitor. Basically just means that a, a, a wireless card is already obviously capable of intercepting uh, Wi-Fi signals in the air, that's precisely what it is meant to do, um, but uh, in this case, um, the difference is, is that we're looking for a hidden wireless network, and uh, those don't typically appear in the list of available networks. Um, the, B, the SSID isn't broadcast in those cases, although obviously the signal is still broadcasting, right? Because if you know the SSID, you can enter that in, and uh, then if there's any additional password or, or any other pre-share queue that's required, then you can enter that as well and still connect to the network. So um, all we're doing here is basically flipping this so that um, we can <clears throat> detect those um, those networks that aren't broadcasting an SSID as well. <laughs> and the name has switched from WLAN O to WLAN O Mon. Uh, I just made a typo there, so forget that we want to use Arrow Dump. And we are using AeroDump on WLAN Oman so that we can see what networks are broadcasting near this device. And we can see on the left-hand column we have the BSSID, uh, which is going to be the broadcast uh, SSID for any, or it's the base, sorry, base SSID uh, for any networks that are broadcasting. And if we go to the far right column, we can see ESSID. Uh, that is what we would normally see in a list of available networks. Uh, we can see UWSP Legacy is here, EDU Roam, UWSP Unsecure Guest, UWSP Device, and UWSP Wireless. These are official campus um, wireless networks. Uh, UWSP Legacy is no longer around. Um, it was a WPA2 pre-shared key network that we used for devices that couldn't use radius authentication, but that's now gone. Uh, EDU Roam is a network that is available on every UW campus, uh, or I should say every UW system connected property. Um, the idea is that you're a UWSP student, but if you were to go to UW Madison or Platteville or any other institution in the UW system, you could use your UWSP credentials to connect to the EDU Roam network, which exists at all of those places, and you'd still be able to get out to the internet without having to do anything special. It's just sort of a uh, a deal we have with our confederation of institutions here in Wisconsin. So uh, that's what that is. Uh, Unsecured Guest is our BYOD network. It is segmented from everything else, and you'll notice that there is no pre-shared key there in the ENC column for encryption type. 
the first two are WPA2. Um, the other one is OPN, that's open authentication, which if you look at the slides for this week, you'll know what that means. Basically means that there is no pre-shared key, there's no certificates required, none of that. It's simply uh, open auth. Uh, there is a uh, captive portal, which will ask you to enter in your email address, such as it requires uh, for access to that network, but that's it, right? Uh, USB device is, uh, again, another older network. That one is um, WPA2 with a pre-shared key. Um, that one is one that we use for devices, again, that can't do radius authentication for one reason or another, and is generally restricted these days to the residence halls, because most of the devices we're talking about for, for those kinds of devices that don't use radius authentication at all, um, it's um, like embedded devices and smart devices and stuff that we don't really have on campus. We don't really want them on campus, but they might exist in the dorms. You can see that the auth method there for the first two, you just speed legacy and ED room is MGT for managed. Uh, that means that it's using radius for authentication. This is PSK for USB device. It's pre-shared key. Uh, and our UWSP wireless is the official wireless that you need domain credentials to log on to here on campus, which will drop you somewhere in the fact staff VLAN, I think, or something like that. Um, and there you go. We have another one here that doesn't have an SSID. Uh, you can see uh, the one in the middle here just says length 21, I think. I... Yeah, there it is. So that line right there, we can see there's our BSSID, but it does not have an ESSID being broadcast. That is a hidden wireless network. And in fact, it is a hidden wireless network. We don't know what it is right now, but we do know that it's 21 characters long, whatever it happens to be. And we can see that that one's also a pre-shared key. So that one doesn't require any credentials whatsoever other than the pre-shared key. We're going to copy the BSSID because we're going to need it for the next command where we're going to run arrow dump again, but we're going to run it only searching for that BSSID. And basically, we're not going to be searching for anything in the area. We're going to be scanning just that BSSID looking for uh, connections. What we want to do is we want to catch someone connecting to that wireless so that we can do a relay on it. Uh, and the command I just entered here um, the W root desktop, what that's doing is that's going to uh, run a cap on it. We're going to capture those packs and uh, we're going to save those to the desktop so that we can uh, read them later to try to crack the password with air crack. All right, so now we're scanning just that hidden wireless network. We still don't know what the ESSID is, but as soon as we get someone to connect and someone just did, you can see the ESSID changes to tell my Wi-Fi I love her. So that's the name of our hidden wireless network. Now, we didn't have to do anything to get that to appear. Um, that appears when, essentially, if you uh, watch the lecture for, for uh, Wednesday, um, these uh, wireless devices are in kind of a constant state of pinging to access points and de-authing and re-authing and so on. Um, so if, for some reason... Uh, it didn't appear as it did. We could, and I may do it here, I can't remember or not, uh, but we may force a device to re-auth or send, send a request to de-auth and re-auth uh, in order to uh, get it to appear if it doesn't talk. In this case, it, uh, yeah, we're going to be using AirPlay to do just that, as a matter of fact, in a moment. <clears throat> that same BSSID, and we are going to put in the station ID or the BSS ID for the connecting device in this case. Um, and we're basically going to send to that station, we're going to send deauth packets so that it reauths to that um, that network. Uh, I made a typo again, but yeah. See, there it goes. Sending deauths to that station, and uh, we can see, there we go. Uh, another reason that we did this with AirPlay is you can see up at the top, WPA Handshake, and we have the BSSID for our network. That's something that we wanted to do also to make sure that the capture file that we have contains the hash for that reshared key. So now we can see that feedback, WPA Handshake, there. We know now that it does. We can move on to the next step. 
We don't see the hash just yet, uh, but we know that our capture file has it because we just got that feedback. So now we're going to run air crack, which is going to try and crack that hash if it's available. And I believe that we have a, uh, I'm going to be using a shorter list of passwords. We could use Rocky or any other password list for this, but I'm going to be using a shorter one just for speed here. This is, of course, cracking passwords as we, we did before. We know takes, or can take uh, quite a bit of time. So I'm running air crack. Uh, that's the BSSID for our station. And here I'm going to the password list so I can get the path to it. And I was doing this in a virtual machine. So, or uh, I'm sorry, on a live boot Kali, um, which meant that uh, I had to go to a weird kind of path to get to the password file that I had saved to the live boot disk. There it is. So that's why the path is weird, is because this was a live boot in Kali. Um, all right, and we're going to save that to our desktop. Or we're going to, sorry, we're not going to save that to our desktop. We're going to get the capture we saved to our desktop so that Aircrack can look there for, there we go. I can go and look for that uh, hash and try to crack it. You can see with our short password list, it took no time at all, right? So we have key found, good overall is the pre shared key for this network. And now we can go up and we can connect. Or did I not bother? Well, apparently I didn't bother. Well, with the pre-shared key, we, all we had to do was sign into that Wi-Fi network. It would have been fine. All right, so it's really simple. Um, you know, I know that this probably barely uh, warranted a demonstration. But if you haven't done it before... Uh, it, of course, seems more complicated than it actually is. So um, those are the steps. That's all that was required. Uh, some of the pitfalls that we could have run into, of course, as we talked about in class, there's always a possibility that they may be taking advantage of other security features over wireless, um, such as they are. They were already doing a uh, hidden network, which is already considered enhanced security over a pre-shared key. Of course, if we were using uh, managed authentication of some type, uh, we would need domain credentials to do that. But... Um, that's not necessarily that difficult to achieve either. Um, what else? Um, they could have used a stronger key. Then it would have been difficult to crack it, although not necessarily impossible. Um, but yes, in this case, for this demonstration, we had a lot of things that worked in our favor, but it's not necessarily an um, unrealistic scenario for a demonstration. Um, okay, that's it then. That's the demo. Uh, I hope that uh, you have a good weekend. Um, you know, make sure that if you try this out at home, that you're careful, that you're only attacking your own networks. We don't want to have you attacking your neighbor or your roommate's Wi-Fi or whatever your situation happens to be. And I'm sorry for uh, canceling uh, class yesterday. Honestly, <clears throat> I uh, I had the worst migraine of my entire life um, to the point where it's like it wasn't even really my headache that bothered me. It was the fact I could like I thought I was dying. I'm not kidding. Uh, like I like the the headache was bad enough, but then the nausea and the cold sweats, and I was like, "What is wrong with me? Like, is this how is this how I go out?" It was just so weird. Um, but yeah, you know, we do what we got to do, and I'm glad we could get this out for you. And I'm about to record uh, the last lecture for this week for two two six. So if you're in that class, uh, I guess we'll see you there. Or if you watch that one first. Then, good to have you back. Whatever. <laughs>